So hello everyone, welcome uh, to our Birds in the Feather session. And today we have two sessions in one. So first of all, it's their ladies, and then second is developers. Um, developers. Welcome. welcome. Welcome, okay. And I will start today talk with you about um, the Our Ladies. So my name is Daniela Casal, and I am part of the Bioconductor um, Community Advisor, and I am also the co-founder of two Our Ladies chapter. And um, today, as I mentioned today, I want to talk about the global community involving Our Ladies, but also I have super uh, exciting news that I'll be uh, showing to you uh, at the end of this presentation. Can you see the slides? The people, uh, okay, I see a thumbs up. Awesome. Um, so my my first point here is like, why do we need initiatives like Our Ladies and why we need to talk about this? So in the 2017 survey, um, the authors contact the CREN uh, package maintainers, okay, and who self-identified as a scientist and they send out, they contact them by email and they ask a few questions to answer that online. And as you can see in this plot, and this was 2017, only 11% of the package maintainers who identify themselves like as a scientist were women, women or not a non-binary. And this is like something incredible for me. And um, also in the survey, they found out that 16% of the respondents self-identified as being located outside Europe and North America. As we know, that is super central. The developer, the package, and the users, they are users, are super central to Europe and North America. In addition to that, 80% of the answers uh, self-identified as either uh, having a complete uh, PG or like they are in the process to get uh, the degree. So based on that, it's really clear that um, we need to have initiatives to um, fill this gap and um, to try to equilibrate and try to have a more proportional um, um, within the community. And now I would like to ask you a few questions. Uh, have you, uh, please hands up, and here, please hands your, uh, your hand. And the people uh, virtual, also you can use the feature. Yeah, thank you, Stephanie. Um, have you heard about Our Ladies? Okay, well, cool, nice. Uh, this is awesome. And have you ever attended the meetings? Okay, okay. And are you a chapter organizer? Okay, okay, uh, two and one local, uh, one here. Uh, okay, so for those, okay, this was my slide for those who doesn't know about our ladies. I highly recommend you to watch uh, last year's um, BioC conference uh, keynote uh, talk from Gabriela de Queiroz. Um, I think this is an awesome talk. She talks about, Gabrielle de Queiroz is the founder of the Our Ladies, and it's an awesome talk to understand the history uh, behind uh, Our Ladies. So I really recommend you to watch that. I add here the link, so it's easy to find in the slides, but also, by, uh, probably you already know this, but Bioconductor has a, a YouTube channel, and if it does a good uh, search, you find that. And then there, you can also see that they have an entire playlist with all the recordings for last year conference, besides like all the other uh, recordings there. Also, Aiden mentioned that we have the developers forum and all the recordings for that also is done by a conductor. So uh, please check that out. <clears throat> and so they are ladies, it's, um, here's, uh, the mission of the Our Ladies, the goal of the Our Ladies, is the world wise organization that promotes diversity in the Our Stats community via meetups and mentorship in a friendly and safe environment. Um, so this is the mission, this is uh, the vision, and this is the goal of the organization. But as 
as a um, a volunteer organization, we we know that we need a lot of people um, to organize uh, organizations such as uh, our, our ladies, and our ladies is organized with uh, uh, um, a global leadership, which is le led by Claudia, Erin, and Hannah. But also, we we need more people to to do this work. And then we have volunteers that take care of the website, the blog, the Slack, the Twitter, um, and all the other activities like the mentorship, um, the directory, we'll talk about more of that in a moment, the emails, and the code of conduct. So we need a lot of people to organize uh, and to have an org organization as we have in the Our Ladies. And besides of that, our ladies also have the local leadership. And what I meant by that, each city has one chapter. And with that local chapter, we do have a local co-founders and the organizing of that chapter. So what I'm showing here to you is the global team, but we also have the local co-founders and organizers. But now we understand what is the mission of the Our Ladies and what um, and how is organized there, ladies? Let's understand a little bit about the beginning, even though here probably everyone knows um, uh, about this. But the Our Ladies started in, in 2000, was born in, two, in 2012 in San Francisco. And the, as I mentioned before, Gabriela de Queiroz uh, is the founder of the Our Ladies. And at the time, she was going to a lot of meetups meet in, in San Francisco. And she noticed that we need a safe and a welcome and a friendly environment to everyone to feel uh, okay to ask questions, to um, make comments, and a, a welcoming environment. So she decided to um, a host, it, host uh, the first meetup, Our Ladies. And then a few years um, passed, and then other three chapters were created. And then in 2016, uh, San Francisco and the London chapter, they got together and they uh, used our conference and the Our Ladies Global were created. Uh, that was great, the Our, Late, uh, Our Ladies Global were created. Um, and then, uh, as we know, as I was mentioned, a lot, we need a lot of people to organize such an organization. Also, we need resources, we need money. <laughs> So they, um, in, in 2016, when they found the Our Ladies Global, they applied for the Art Consortium and then Our Ladies Global uh, was awarded with $10,000. So that helped them to establish the resources to develop and to grow uh, other chapters around uh, the world. And this is really impressive. So uh, with Denmark, in the creation of the Our Ladies Global in 2016, uh, you can see how uh, the growth of uh, how many chapters around the world we have. And this, I know this is 2020 uh, plot, but as yesterday, I, oops, <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> yesterday, I updated um, this data. And as you can see here, uh, we now have 216 chapters, over uh, a um, 100,000 uh, members uh, in 61 uh, countries, and then we are close to 4,000, almost 4,000 um, events. Um, so it's it's huge, it's a lot, and I'm super happy to be part of this um, um, this community. Only one click, okay. And um, um, other thing is like worth it to mention that in 2018, our ladies got this long-term support from the Art Consortium, which this means they don't need to renew um, uh, this award every year. It's a long term of three years. And also our ladies became this top level uh, project within the Art Consortium. So that, is what is allowing to um, the organization to continue to grow and have the resources to be able to have all these um, meetups around the, uh, the world. I'm free to pass you. 
so our lady has a lot of initiatives and here I'm just highlighting a few as for instance we have the community slack where you have many channels there uh, to ask help um, to uh, find peers and it's a very nice community I guess it's almost 5,000 people in this slack community also uh, they have which I think is awesome um, the abstract review process. So if you have an abstract, you need to send for a conference or you are adding that in a, on a, a paper, you can submit to a review and also you can sign up as a reviewer. So both of our links are uh, on the slides. And uh, also they have the mentoring program. Also, uh, you can see the slides, um, the link there in the slides to sign up for the mentoring program. And they have the directory, uh, which means that you can sign up and you can make you available to present. So if you are looking for someone to present, to give an workshop, a talk, you can visit this page and find ladies around the world to, who are willing to talk about the package they have or wants to uh, present the work they, uh, they are doing. Um, please check this out if you are organizing a workshop or any type of events. And also they are super active on Twitter. So if you um, don't know, please follow all the uh, Our Ladies uh, Twitter accounts. Um, and now I would like to invite Hedia to talk about one um, amazing uh, initiative she's held, uh, holding with the Our Ladies Tunis. Hi everyone. So I'm Hedia Tnani. I'm uh, co-founder of Our Ladies Tunis and uh, since, can you hear me? Yes. 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 Yeah. Okay. Uh, so uh, I am uh, passionate about R and R related to programming and um, in 2020 we co-founded Our Ladies Tunis. We figured out that there was no an R community in uh, North Africa, and it was an amazing experience. But then the idea was, uh, since um, I was doing bioinformatic work, how to connect bioconductor and R and R related, you know, to R and bioconductor. Uh, so uh, we came out with this uh, initiative called R for Bioinfo, and it was about uh, organizing a free workshop for people coming from low income countries uh, such as Tunisia, because in Tunisia we didn't have uh, the opportunity to attend uh, like uh, workshops abroad. It was very expensive for us. And we came up with this amazing initiative, uh, yeah, uh, R for Bioinfo. Uh, please, the next slide. <laughs> Next slide, please. Yeah. So we had amazing speakers such as uh, Stephanie Hicks, thank you very much, and Mike Love and uh, Martin Morgan. And we had really, we organized uh, 14 um, workshops about uh, bioconductor, bioinformatics, and it was to give the opportunity to people from all over the globe, uh, from people from Africa, from yeah, low income countries, no low income countries. Yeah, women or who, who uh, everyone who wants to learn more about bioinformatics. So it was an amazing initiative. And here I show, so one of the videos we have in YouTube, which reached uh, 2000 views. So uh, we had lots of view in YouTube and we've got many people asking for more uh, workshops uh, from this series. So if you want yeah, to learn more about this initiative, uh, please, yeah, we have our Alledge Tunis YouTube channel where you can find all the workshops. And yeah, thank uh, we yeah. In the name of Ale Distunis, I would like to thank all the speakers that were really nice, and we really enjoyed those uh, workshops, and we le uh, learned a lot from them. So thank you a lot for these amazing talks. Thank you. 
Um, thank you, Daniela. Thank you. Uh, and then also you were talking about the YouTube channel from your initiative. Uh, I just remind, uh, remind myself that we do have our uh, YouTube uh, channel for the other ladies, which I forgot to add here. Sorry about that. Uh, also, like in that, uh, you can find the talks from different chapters. So it's like um, a hub of like all all the people who wants can add the, the videos there. So you can also find like multiple videos in the Art Ladies YouTube channel. Uh, can I add something? Uh, actually, when I joined Art Ladies, I didn't, well, um, I know about programming, but I've learned so much from all the Art Ladies chapters. Uh, and they were really nice, you know, in uh, like Spanish, in all the languages, English, even Arabic from, yeah, the like our ladies, North Africa, from Algeria, Morocco. And it was a great opportunity to join this, uh, yeah, amazing community and to learn a lot, you know, from this amazing experience. So it was a great opportunity for me. Thank you. So the big question now is like, are you ready to join us? And to do that, it's super easy uh, because with this link, uh, you can visit this meetup.com for all our ladies and you can find the list of all the chapters. So you can search for the chapter around you. However, if your city doesn't have a chapter, it's also super easy to create a chapter. Um, so the first thing you need to do is just send an email to info at ourladies.org and they'll send you all the information, everything you need to know and everything, uh, all the steps in this process. But also, I'm super happy, I'll like, be honored to answer any questions you may have with that because as I mentioned, I already um, co-found some chapters. So uh, if I can answer the question and point you the right direction in that, I'm happy to help anyone who wants to do that or have questions related to that. And also recently we have their ladies remote. So then is is like another chapter that you can also um, um, participate. But most of our ladies I'm seeing like they're still hosting the uh, because pandemic. We are all hosting the events on like on Zoom. So it's easy and super nice sometimes like you can go to Canada or you can go to Poland and then you can go all places or go to Tunis and then see uh, other um, or other events organized for like all the ladies around the world. And finally, here is our big news that, okay, here, we are uh, organizing the Our Ladies BioC Hub. So this is an initiative to bring together the Our Ladies community with the Bioconductor community as well. Uh, we are just setting up this, so we don't know all the details, but please stay tuned because we are posting soon all the details about like how this uh, uh, will be. It will be, of course, online, a remote event. And, um, but we are posting on the social medias everywhere, like how this will work. And so stay tuned for the Our Ladies BioC. And with that, I would like to open a discussion because uh, we are starting this um, Our Ladies BioC, but my question to you all is like, what are the types of events you like to see there? Is a workshop, is talks, it's tutorials, package demo, or other suggestions? And then also uh, one of the questions is how we can improve network mentorship and um, support the community. So I would like to open this discussion and also if you point your phone to the QR code, we create a Google form to you give, uh, is an open um, Google form and remain open to, uh, to anyone to give us suggestions and ideas and also if you want to present or help organize any of these activities please let us know we also on slack we just created uh, on uh, bioconductor slack we just created this channel called our ladies so please join that uh, channel as well and i would love to hear what your suggestions and any feedback I believe the people online can, uh, yes. Uh, uh, they can unmute and talk. Okay. Yeah. Great. Okay. 
Um, thank you so much. I guess like one thing that I struggle with. So my name is Stephanie Hicks and I co-run a uh, local Our Ladies community in Baltimore, Maryland. And I, one of the things I struggle with is not wanting to impose too much genomics on the Our Ladies community in, um, in, uh, in Baltimore, because there are a lot of people who do other things besides genomics. And so I've struggled with um, the balance, I guess, and, and Hopkins has a large medical community, so there's a lot of demand for it. But then we also have a lot of people in the local like DC area who come for events and things. And I was just wondering if you, Denny or others have thoughts on that, striking that balance. Um, for me, it was the same thing uh, because I always wanted to provide it. So, so that was one thing, I guess, we come up with this idea to have their ladies BioC because I always want to invite everyone from BioC <laughs> for, for my local chapter. So I guess I also struggle with the same thing. And for me, talking about my experience, I struggle with, like finding people like because I know some people, but I would like to have a more diverse people, not just the people I know. So I guess having a, a, a directory with like uh, it's easy to contact people, to find people by a field or by the area they are working with or the language uh, they talk. Also, uh, I guess it's really helpful um, and it's one of the things I struggle the most, I guess. Um, Adin or Lori, you want to comment on that? Uh, I, I, my basic struggle is the same thing. Well, that and trying to get people, I guess, initially. So I'm trying or tried or it's been a little bit of a hiatus to start a chapter in Buffalo, but it was very slow. And um, I was trying to think of ways to get more people involved as well as struggling with finding presenters. Um, so... I'm still kind of balancing the idea, and um, at least for me, my initial search for help in doing that was also trying to get the local universities and institutions involved too, and like going back to my old computer science department and some of the professors that I had um, to try to get them involved. Still a work in progress, but that's kind of where I'm going with it and trying to revamp it and get it actually off the ground, but I am, I am really struggling right now to get the Buffalo chapter off the ground. I would like to. As I'm trying to remember the Twitter password for the Buffalo Our Ladies Twitter account. <laughs> <laughs> That's what tweet deck is. I don't know. Do we have other our ladies on the call? So, so you like to share your experience? Uh, yes. Uh, actually, about uh, like uh, in our ladies Tunis, we try to split like uh, the R for bioinfo and data science. So we had two teams, one working on uh, data science like workshops and the other team the one uh, yeah, I was leading, the R for bioinfo. And that's how we were trying to balance a little bit because also in our team, we had people from uh, coming from data science and I was yeah, passionate about bioinformatics and trying every time to look for like a speaker, yeah, to, like, uh, to, or, or to organize a workshop, yeah, about like bioinformatics, so. And um, the issues we were having is the language, because in Tunisia we talk uh, Arabic and French, so not many people are fluent in English. So yeah, we had this big issue actually. Can I just ask what is the format of our ladies? Because I I attended personally Pi Ladies, mm -hmm. which was like a course it was basically do you want to learn how to do python and they really like introduce you well if you write a equals one then you type a it returns you one so it went like like straight from scratch so like i'm just wondering is it is this just more like workshop you are expected to have some you know prior art experience or or is it more like a course you can also learn how to how to code from scratch. I, I, I'm just so, wondering. Yeah, my, my experience attending it, it's kind of whatever the local yes. chapter wants. So 
in Boston, at least, where I attended it, there were courses like that that took things from scratch and gave courses. But then after that was done, there was a series of kind of various different workshops from different people in different industries talking. So it kind of just went with the interests, I think, of the organizers as much as anything else. But it wasn't just like a repeating intro to our course. Yeah, yeah, I, I have the same experiences. I guess it's that the uh, Art Leaders Global doesn't impose any format. It's basically what the local chapter or the local community is interested in. So if the local community is looking for more like intro, then uh, you may uh, have that. But for instance, in the chapter I organize in Riverside, California, a lot of the people who show up are from the knowledge uh, department. So then we had some talks like uh, how they use, like it's kind of specific to what they do, like and then what they are looking for. So at the beginning, for instance, in our chapter, we did a survey to see like, what are you looking for? We did this first meeting, we got like everything, everyone who like wanted to participate, and then we ask, what are you looking for? And then we try to um, achieve that, to, to, to provide that. So I guess there is no rules or for like established format is what you, you want to create or what your community is looking. Kind of the same question here, what is the bioconductor community is looking for? So then, um, as we are organizing a new um, a new chapter, our latest bio C, how we can uh, help the bio uh, the, the bio uh, conductor community? What would you find most useful? So so that's that's base. I don't know, but you know, like in terms of kind of advertising it to other people, I just kind of like wanted to know what the format is because based on that, you kind of find your audience right so like if it's like coding from scratch you can also like you know there might be girls in high schools that are that are interested in like getting heads up before like like going to college you know or if it's bioconductor for example or like mm -hmm. biological data processing there are so many people in molecular biology freaking out about <laughs> freaking out about bioinformatics and entering computational biology so just like maybe kind of like addressing these kind of like biologists maybe something like this you know i and i know that everyone is just like oh i know how to how to do wet lab um and i'm just really i know that you know computational biology is important I just have no idea like where to start and and I know that they're scared so like I'm just like you know I think that their first has to be kind of what is the purpose and then you can find your target audience kind of I guess yeah. so that's what, what, what why I was asking basically okay. we have I saw Susan but I want, I want to make one point here sometimes your community you have people looking for a basic like uh, from where you start and also you have more advanced people so how is like I, I, I see the opposite to what you're saying because for me like if you want to um, have the community together you need to have a way uh, not to be like uh, just providing basic but also you need to bring the community mm -hmm. together to have the advanced people so the way I see it is like if you have a let's let's call basic in advance basic and advanced people in the same room, the advanced can help the, the basic uh, starting in that in, in the process. So um, I, I don't know if we need to find first what, what we um, propose, rather than see what the community is looking that, and then we can attend that, or maybe do something as Stephanie was saying, how you calibrate that between everything the community is looking for. Mm -hmm. Because we can do that. We can actually have a series of workshops or talks or anything to different targets in, in, within the community. I don't know. Susan? Yeah, I, um, I think that um, I, I wouldn't talk about um, people in the same room right now because I'm sort of more geared towards doing a lot of online work. Um, in the context of more global, all ladies global, and 
um, getting to countries where there's not the same resources. But I think that um, it's not so much organizing a workshop or a tutorial than teaching people how to navigate what exists. And people, of course, we don't know what we don't know. And having discussions about, okay, here's a career path or here's a path that gets you from A to B in your knowledge. You'll have to do this, this, and this. That's more useful because there's so many YouTube videos. There's so much material available, but it's very hard to navigate. And so having more sort of panel discussions and answering questions and explaining, you know, this is how to get started. This is the next step. You know, what the paths are, I think, is really important. Um, and that's what we can provide. Any other comments, sir? And I know you said stay tuned for uh, <laughs> the um, BioC help, but could you actually talk about a little bit more? I mean, you can't show me that little sticker and not. <laughs> <laughs> it, it's, it's because it's really new. We don't know all the details. I'm sorry about that. Okay. We're still figuring out the details, but it's basically another chapter, but focus on the Our Lady, um, Our Lady's BioC. Okay. Yeah. I don't know. I was still are navigating the details how we set up the because of your remote. Uh -huh. uh, but yes, yeah, stay tuned. Okay. If I can promise that. All right. I'll be patient. What's your name? I'm Jen. Okay, yeah. Oh, so oh, do people want to sign up to help Daniela? That's like the big other thing here is she would love to have other people to help her. Yes, please. Okay, uh, Stephanie's that... volunteering there. Anybody here wants to help? <laughs> On that on that Google uh, form and on the QR code, I have a question there. Like, if you want to help, please let us know. Okay. And if, if you didn't get that, just like Slack us at the CAE. Yeah, yeah. Or, the community or in the Our Ladies uh, um, channel on. Yeah. yeah, there's a new Our Ladies channel yeah. and a community bioconductor. Um, yeah. yeah. So can I just ask? So is I know the title is Our Ladies, but um, so non-binary people can join or. Everyone, yes. Yes. queer people. It's, so it's everyone. just like ladies everyone. in name, but not necessarily yeah, everyone. represented the group. Okay, yeah. thank you. I just yeah. want to clarify that. And while not strictly our ladies, just to point out the other Slack channel, there is a diverse um, BioC community Slack channel that aims at all diversity and inclusion as well. So um, that's another Slack channel that would be good for communication amongst yeah. everyone. <laughs> and and I don't think our ladies is restricted to ladies. Like Mike no, is no, doing no, phenomenal no, work no. within our it ladies. Actually, so guys that want to help the app. If you look at the anybody. definition is for um, unrepresented uh, people. So. Okay. All right, thank you. Yeah. Can we start? Yeah, we switch over to the developers group now. <laughs> Mark, did you get my slides? Yeah. Or I just like. Uh, did you just put them up? Um, I, I emailed you um, a link.